Welcome to Eternal Truth Now. I'm Elaine Haynes. I'm Kerry Haynes. And we're thrilled that you joined us today to receive the Word of God. We love the Word of God. That's why we're, we call it Eternal Truth Now is our ministry because God's Word is eternal. It was just as He is. It was and it is and it ever will be. And it establishes our course. It corrects us. It quickens us brings life to our bones and health to all of our flesh. And so we're glad you joined us today. Um, today we're going to be continuing in our series of seaworthy or shipwrecked. And we desire to be seaworthy vessels. And today specifically we're going to be talking about in this first session, let the captain navigate. In the second session we'll be talking about when you presume you bring doom. And both are really essential teachings, so I pray that you stay with us. I'm going to open in prayer, and then we're going to get right into the Word. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your Word. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring life to the Word, that you illuminate the Word of God so that we can understand it, so that it can be quickened to our spirit, that our spirit joins your spirit, Lord God, through the power of your Word and the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for your Word. Yes, God. that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing divider into the, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow, and is a yes, discerner God. of the thoughts and intents of our heart. So, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that every person that is tuned in today or watches the recording later, Lord God, that they would be quickened, that new ground would be burst open, Lord God, that paths would be set and established, Lord God, for them to walk straight forward into their destiny, Lord God, not turning to the right or to the left, Lord God, but following your voice only. We pray these things in your name, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be talking, like I said, today is about, this first session is about let the captain navigate. You know, and so often, um, even as Christians, we say that we're letting God, Jesus, steer the ship. We're led by the Spirit. But many times it's through the filtering of our own thoughts. and Or we take the helm. You know, we, we get a word from him. We get a little bit of a direction. And then we decide we know the way to go based on previous things that we've experienced, even with God. And it's how important it is to listen and stay in the moment, you know, because the winds can change direction. You know, thinking about the analogy of a ship. The winds can change direction. Storms will come. And it's very important to follow the navigation of the captain of the ship. Yeah, you know, there's a wind of the spirit, you know, that, that Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. Yes. And that cool of the day is that wind of the spirit, the yes. ruach of God, the Amen. breath of God. Yes. And so when you said that the winds can change and Jesus said, you know, everyone that is, the wind bloweth where it will. Yes. Where it listeth. Yes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So we Amen. desire right now definitely to be yes. follow the Holy Spirit Amen. because the, we don't want anything to be birth of the flesh no. but of the Spirit. Right. And, uh, you know, when you're talking, using the word captain, you know, mm -hmm. that the captain of the helm, uh, the captain of the ship, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, in Hebrews it's talking about Jesus being the captain uh, of our walk with him. In yes. Hebrews 2, 10 and 11, he says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, Hallelujah. to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Amen. So Jesus is, you know, the captain, captain of our salvation. Yes. And it's interesting, you know, he, he was on earth as a man. Yes. But he was made perfect through sufferings. Through sufferings. And it goes on to say in 2.11, For both he that sanctifieth, Jesus, Jesus the Holy Spirit, and Amen. they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brother. Amen. That, that we're one with him. So we want to be one with the captain. But it, and it's interesting, in 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2, it says that, For as much then as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise Amen. with the same mind. Yes. For he that has suffered in the flesh 
hath ceased from sin, mm -hmm. that he should no longer, no longer should live the rest of his time in the, in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Amen. 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 And yeah. you know, we talked in previous sessions about suffering and how um, it's suffering in the flesh. I mean, we sometimes do suffer um, in other ways too. But the, you know, there's the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. And we have to suffer. There's, you know, our, our mind, our pride, our ego is, is a, there's a subconscious area where we don't even think about it mm. consciously. But it, we want our to be directed by our own thinking. We think we know things. We think we understand even God. We think we understand the way that we're supposed to go. But the reality is many times we're deceived and we're led, being led by our flesh. And we think we know a way we want to go because it's easier. It's something we're comfortable with. It's something we're familiar with. The uncomfortable, I mean, the, the unfamiliar is very uncomfortable. You know, because oftentimes with God's timing, there's a, a period, a transition period, especially on our journey into our destiny. There's, there's many transitions. And, you know, we live in a culture where everything is boom, boom, boom. You know, we want it right now. We want to, we want to get there faster, quicker, easier, and that's, you know, all the technology and everything makes all those things possible. But the reality is in God's ways and in God's timings, there's seasons, there's timings. And he is so beautiful and so wonderful and so gracious that he gives us periods of rest. Many times, you know, he'll give you a word and you want to run forward with it. You want to see it happen. But God is so gracious and patient and kind and he knows how he created us and there's a, a period where we can just let that word resonate within us let our soul become accustomed to the thought of it to the vision of it let us spend time with him and seek him well what does that really look like and then move into that and you know we there's a verse in proverbs 14 tw uh, 12 is that there is a way which seemeth right unto the unto a man but the in thereof are the ways of death and you know there is a dying to self there's a dying to to desires of our own desires but god's desires for us are so much greater they're so much better they're so much higher they're so much more satisfying and you know i've been on a lot of paths even even when i was first born again i i was of that mind where um there's that old adage about um God's, uh, God's given you the gift of a new life and what you do with it is your gift to him. Something like that. But, but that is just like so not right. I, I used to think that way that, you know, God's given me a whole new chance, a whole new life when you're born again, right? And you want to make it right. You want to do it right for him because you love him so much. But you can't, like Carrie said, I think you said that in, right earlier, that you, what's begun in the in the spirit you have to continue you in the can't spirit you can't perfect it in the, in the flesh. flesh right and so many times we'll do that we'll run ahead of god you know we'll and we'll make a big mess of things but the end the end of our own ways of thinking the things that we think the right or the what right ways to think many times end in death and it doesn't mean physical death we wouldn't still be here we've had lots of deaths deaths to following your own ways deaths of relationship deaths of finances, deaths of health, all those kind of things when you seek after your own ways. But many times we seek after an easy way out because it, the, the, his way seems harder because you have to, you have to continue to press in. You have yeah, to continue. It seems, it seems, it seems it, 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 right. you know, that's what we were talking about this with uh, Adam, you know, when uh, Satan was deceiving Eve, he said, you know, he, he lied to her yes. about the nature of God. Yes, he did. And when God will, like, you know, so many years in my Christian life that I thought, well, it, you know, I, I didn't have, I, the goodness of God wasn't before me enough, the tasting of the goodness mm -hmm. of God to where I knew that 
God, that's what I want. Yes. You know, that's what I want. And, uh, you know, but coming into the now, it's like when, you know, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. So you, you it's a choice. You know, yes. you, you make, you know, wait a minute, I'm going to like pray right now. I'm going to seek the Lord right yes. now and try mm -hmm. to, you know, I want to hear his voice. Right. Uh, and you may think, oh, gosh. Really? You know, is that, that's going to be a little hard. It requires a little effort, mm -hmm. which it does. It requires right. effort. But when you start, then you, but then it's actually, then you taste of the spirit. Yes. And you realize God's not trying to hold you back from enjoying life. You, right. in, you know, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever right. is, is the truth. And that's the most satisfying thing. If you really build relationship with him then you begin to trust him and trust is always a key issue you know if you really examine your thoughts of why you you make certain choices it's many times just because you don't understand the ways of god you don't understand how good he is and that that his ways are higher than our ways it tells us in isaiah 55 9 for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts and we all know Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Or in another version, it says, a hope and a future. That God's ways are higher than ours. We don't understand them. And many times it's, we get frustrated because we want to understand. I know that's been a big thing for me. It you know, I, I, it's yeah. important to me to try to understand like the big picture. Well, and you know what you're talking about the uncomfortableness of transition. Really, mm -hmm. God's trying to transition you out of the flesh into the spirit. That's right. And, yes. and the things of the flesh, it's not like God going, no, 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 don't do that. He, he's doing that because there's so much higher, there's so, so much, much more satisfying right. yes. that He's trying to bring you into. Right. And in order to do that, He sometimes He, he has to dry up the old. That's right. And even dr dry up you having pleasure in the things of the flesh. Right. You know, so... Well, even sometimes it's the things of ministry that, you know, you're wondering why something came to an end. Yeah. Because there's something, now it's time to transition into a new thing that God wants to do. And you liked that and you were great at it, but it's time for the new thing. And, you know, so many times we, we struggle at that. We chafe at the bit, you know, because we, we think, well, that must be Satan. I've thought that. Yeah, and times. you know, when, when that verse we read earlier, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Mm -hmm. You know, arm yourself with the, the thought, if you will. Yeah. That the, I don't know how many times, I love this verse in Isaiah uh, 55, 9. Mm -hmm. For the, the heavens are higher than there. It's been, you know, the book of Isaiah is very prophetic in nature. Yes. I mean, the entire word of God is prophetic. What we mean by that in this case is that it changes that nature and structure in you. Right, as you and hear it. And as you hear it. it and and I know how it. many times I read Isaiah 55, 9, mm -hmm. uh, his, his thoughts are higher. His plans are higher. There's higher ground. Yes. And how refreshing, just the thought that that exists. Right. And think about just <laughs> in the natural higher ground, right? When you go up higher, you can see farther, and you can begin to see when you go up higher. Now you can begin to see how it's all being orchestrated. You get to see a bigger picture of what's going on. You see things you didn't see before. You see how, how these different lives are inter intersecting with your life. You're, you see how, how God brought you out of that place. All of those things, you didn't lose anything along the way. Right. There's never anything lost. Right. But the, you, they'll be used in a different way into what he's bringing you into but you begin to see that you see broader you see more clearly when you're up higher above the storms that are raging right now on the natural level when you go up higher where he is then you begin to receive of his thoughts you begin to receive of his mind you begin to get his perspective and you you begin to see and your perspective changes you're refreshed you're renewed you're revived and you have grown in relationship with him and now you trust him more. And I think about, you know, guys that are, or women that are on, on a ship for long periods of time, six months, nine months, whatever it is. They have to grow to like learn to trust each other and learn, they have to depend on each other. They have to learn to trust the captain. You know, if there's, you know, we don't want mutiny, you know, that everybody's gonna sink. 
You know, but but it takes time. That's what what and what you were alluding to before that thing of trusting something you don't understand. Right. A circumstance that you don't understand, and, right. and instead of you know, it's easy. The natural thing to do is enter into murmuring and complaining, when or really God's escape. trying. You know, part of the discipline of the Lord that's that's uh, no discipline for the moment seems to be joyous but, but grievous. grievous right? But afterward, right. you know, part of what the discipline of the Lord is when you look it up is, is forced learning. Yes. You know, God's trying to right. teach us something. And, and, you know, we might be so antagonistic by nature. The carnal mind right. is, can't be subject to the law of God. Amen. So it can be uncomfortable, something we don't understand. But when we don't, even when we don't understand it, that's what, you know, like you said, trust. There's kind of a little difference between trust and faith. Sometimes Absolutely. you have to just trust right. in the love of God. Yes. That he's, yes. Try, he's always for you. And, and once... Mm -hmm. Again, if you haven't tasted of the goodness of the Lord right. enough times to like get it in your head, mm -hmm. then you go, oh, well, I don't know what God's leading me into. I don't know if I want it. You know, it, it's right. not like that's that lie of Satan. Thinking well, see, that, you know what? So we speak right now against every lie, every deception that the enemy has blinded your mind with that you can't see the love of God. And we declare to you the love of God that he loves you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus to die for your sins, even while you were yet a sinner. He sent his son to die for you. That is the love of God, that he would die for you, that he would die for your sins. Why? So you could be reconciled to him and fulfill the highest calling that he has put inside you. All those things that, that will give you great satisfaction in life to bring restoration to relationships, to bring health to your flesh, to... to to bring recompense for all that has been lost. God is so good. So we just come against every lie that says he isn't, that you can't trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. He is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. There is no one you can trust more. He created you, and he created you for a purpose, a good purpose. You can trust him. I trust him more than anyone I've ever known in my life. There will never be anyone that I trust more than God. He is the only one who is perfect, who thinks perfectly, who understands you. You're looking for somebody to understand you. And, you know, we all need fellowship with one another. God is the only one who fully understands you, who knows you because he formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you before he sent you in the spirit to the earth. He knows everything about you. Every hair on your head is numbered. He knows you. He loves you. And he has a purpose for your life. And the reality is... The Carrie, would you just... Um, um, I want to just say something. One, yeah. to, to the thing about knowing the love of God mm -hmm. and that we prayed for it. But, you know, Jesus, he, 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 this was his prayer to the Father. Mm -hmm. and in John 17, 26, the last verse of that prayer to the Father, he says, And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, yes. and I in them. Amen. And that's what we declare and decree yes. for you. And Jesus prayed that. His prayers are answered. And that's his will. Whatever Amen. is his will, when we pray, yes. we know that we have that petition. Yes, so right. I, I pray it just for a renewing yes. of your awareness, your total recognition of the love of God. Amen. Of Amen. the unconditional love of Amen. God. Amen. That it's not based on your worthiness. Right. Right. You know, he didn't come to condemn, but to save. That's right. And he Amen. has formed you from your mother's womb. Yes. And he, he ordained works for you to walk in that were ordained. Yes. But there's a <laughs> a renewing Amen. or a, a, a continual rebirthing. Right. Uh, that till Christ be formed in you. Yes. And that may be uncomfortable yeah. again because it's coming against that thing that's against it, that, that flesh. That stronghold. That stronghold. A strong, there are strongholds that are formed as we continue in disobedience, as we continue to follow the other voices. There are strongholds that are formed. But the Word of God, by the Spirit of the living God, will break those apart. If you trust Him, if you allow yourself to take that little baby step of faith, and trust him and just move forward you will know that yes. you will know if you do yeah. it if this is the paradox of the kingdom oh, See, we yeah. want to understand it first but if you do it 
This is the paradox. If you do it first and you'll understand later, then you'll know. So, Carrie, would you read um, John, John 7, 7, 17 and 18? Yeah, he says here that, uh, first of all, in 16, Jesus says, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Yes. And again, I don't know how many times God has just said that verse to me that, that switched it from, it wasn't my idea. It's not the way I think mm -hmm. at this moment. Yeah. You know, it's not mine. Right. And he says in 70, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Right. So you do the will first. And that you can't do that unless you know him and trust him. But sometimes there's a little seed, because God's given you a measure of faith. So you step out on that seed, and you do his will, you do what he's told you, and then you'll know. Then you'll know. It's the paradox. Plus, you know, in, in Proverbs 16, it's at the beginning, it says, mm -hmm. commit. When you say commit or trust your way, into, your thoughts, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. unto the Lord. Right. And he will, and your thoughts will be, trust your, commit your way unto the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Right. And when you read that in the Amplified, you're, that you're, he'll bring your thoughts in accordance to his will. Imagine mm -hmm. that. When yeah. you, in your weakness, in your reluctance, mm -hmm. you just, you come to him. You don't let Satan whisper in your ear, oh, don't, don't, don't ask God to help you. I'm serious. Yeah. Don't yeah. ask God to help you. He, he's giving. He's too busy. He, yeah, <laughs> he, you know, this is up to you. And it is, it's up to you to seek the Lord. Right. Say, Lord, help me. You yes. know, to establish my thoughts in your Amen. will. Amen. And the, the, the grace of God yes. ch can change your heart. That's right. To th and it, it's his goodness Amen. that leads you to change, to think differently. Yes. Amen. It's his goodness. Amen. And we avail ourselves of his availability and yes. the word of his grace, the word Amen. of his grace enters us yes. and our, uh, we're established Amen. in his will. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. You know, the, it, so much of, of what um, the relationship that we have depends upon our calling. Mm. And, you know, the, the, there's a beauty in the relationship, but, but we all have, you know, many times we get, we get off track. We're talking about following the navigation. Many times we get off track because we're looking at what somebody else is doing. And, and there's a reality that, that there's a specific calling upon your life. And the relationship that you have with God is going to be unique to what someone else's relationship is. And the things that you experience in your life, you know, I know, Carrie, in Isaiah 30, 20 to 22, there's a really good verse about adversity. Yeah, and it, it says, and, the Lord, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Now, remember, he says in Isaiah also that he's chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Mm -hmm. And, be, right. and in Psalms uh, 119, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Yes. So there's, there's a, this chasing again, this uncomfortableness, right. Right. this forced learning, this right. adversity. Right. And it says, and though the Lord give you, this is uh, Isaiah 30, 20 through 22. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers, Holy Spirit, yeah. Be yeah. removed. He's your teacher. Yes. It will not be. Thy teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Hallelujah. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Amen. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Amen. Amen. To such an extreme, you know, that, what a promise. And I declare yes. your teachers, because God's word does not return yes. void. It prospers in the thing whereto he has sent it. And that prospering is to you that your teacher, the Holy Spirit, his voice, his leading, that plain path mm -hmm. shall not be hidden anymore. Amen. As you turn to him, Amen. We, we declare to you that the Holy Spirit's leading his voice. The God's voice will not be obscured anymore Amen. from you that yes. teaching you to yes. walk in the way of the Lord yes. shall not be hidden anymore and when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left you'll know yes you'll know and that Amen. to such a degree it goes on to say in this verse that you shall after this when this is happening this process of 
hearing your teacher. It's no longer obscure. When that happens, you shall defile or hate also the covering of thy graven images. Amen. And it says in here, of silver and the ornament of molten yes. images of gold. Fill in the blank. Yeah. What your Amen. graven images are. Yes. There's things that you formed for your own pleasure, from your own understanding. There's things that you rely on, that you turn to. That's what an idol is. It's those things that you turn to when it gets hot. When it gets, when the pressure's on, what do you turn to? Are you turning to God? Are you turning, you know, get, getting on Facebook? Are you, are you Googling it? Are you, you know, calling this one, calling that one? Not that we don't need counsel. We do. But first, we, first, we look to God. First, we seek Him. First. And when you form that relationship with Him, it always comes back to relationship. When you begin to grow in your relationship with Him and learn of how good He is, how wise he is, how all-knowing he is. He knows the end from the beginning. When you begin to, to receive revelation of who he is, the head of all authority, created all things, when you begin to see that, then you begin to trust him. Then it begins to open up. Then it becomes easy to cast your idols aside because after, yeah, nothing you know, after compares, you, nothing. The, after the teacher, the Holy Spirit isn't hidden in a corner right. anymore right? because then the spirit of truth is coming. Truth right. sets you free that's right. and it, it, that's a, it sets you free to lay aside yes. all your idols. That's, that's right. what gives you the power to do it. That's absolutely. It's hearing the voice of the Lord, Amen. hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord God. And so this is what we yes. claim. So, Lord, we pray right now that you would begin to reveal the idols in people's hearts and that they have seen and tasted of your goodness even during this broadcast, and they will easily lay them down, Lord God. They, everything even of crowns that have been formed even from working in ministry, they would lay them at your feet even right now and receive the fullness that comes only from looking to you, to being emptied of self and looking to you and allow you to fill and to move through us, Lord God. That is our greatest desire, Lord God, and that is the fulfillment of all things, is to allow you, Jesus, to fill all things. So we pray that and we decree that and declare that over each one of you listening and those that listen by the recording later. We declare and decree that God is good, and He is filling you right now by He's His opening, Spirit. He's opening your ears in to Jesus hear name. the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Your promises are Thank yes you, and Lord amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network. HSBN Television.